All right. Um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, Kiana. Um, we're going to most of this talk is going to be a discussion about the long-awaited function redirection. Um, our uh, third attempt at it, I think. Um, but also, I'm gonna we're gonna go over some of the stuff we've been doing over the last. Uh, I'm sorry, I just want to set up. Yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> We'll also be going over some of the stuff we did uh, over the past year, but we'll try to go over that stuff really quick. Um, so, also. Yeah, this is uh, function redirection or, or doubling down on KUnit, um, as we, we can't go without a pun. Um, so we'll quickly go over what's happened with KUnit. Um, as I mentioned, function redirection proposals, tooling features. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, like, like you said, uh, new tooling features. We'll go on a little bit on more of that later. Uh, we also fixed, uh, finally have support for testing uh, init sections, uh, which is something that was asked for several years ago, and you can do that now. Um, we also uh, no longer conflict with module init and shut down init functions uh, for, for modules. Uh, Jeremy Kerr actually added that. I haven't seen him here, but uh, if he's watching, thank you. That was that was a that was a pain. <laughs> um, we also uh, not really king in it, but we got KSAN support working on UML, which, given that we really like UML, um, even that's an unpopular opinion, that's very very helpful. Um, Google uh, coworker Patricia did that work, um, but it was finally carried over the goal line uh, with some nasty some nasty bugs uh, by Vincent Whitechurch. Um, we've seen a lot of growth in KUnit. Um, we're at 500 tests now. We've been seeing super linear growth for the past three releases, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we a, a pretty substantial portion of the of I don't want to say total. We, we've got a lot of tests from the DRM subsystem. Um, they're going to be presenting actually really uh, after after us, and we'll talk more about that. We also saw a pretty substantial amount of tests from uh, Chrome OS. Um, now, going into some of the new features that I, th I think are kind of cool, um, we have this, uh, we have a new k, uh, k config add, which allows you to add individual um, configs right from the command line, which is really, really helpful for make, like being able to send like one-liners one over IRC. Uh, we also have this uh, Knit config option, where we, we had that before, but you can chain them now. So you can actually use that to merge like multiple different con uh, Kena configs together. So one place that's really, really helpful is uh, like, for, for example, uh, here we have, let's say you want to run uh, the, all the tests in both EXT and VAT. You can just do it with this, this I guess it's a multi-liner, but anyway. Um, uh, we also have Suite in them, um, hermetic testing, which allows you to run every single test case individually. Uh, and uh, another significant thing we did recently was uh, KUnit Enable, uh, which basically allows you to build KUnit into your production kernel, uh, but guarantee that the test will definitely not run. Um, uh, also, KTAP, uh, KTAP is, uh, that happened last year. I think most people are probably aware of that discussion. If you're not, uh, there's a KTAP version 2 that's being worked on now by uh, Frank Rowland. So if you want something in KTAP, you should get involved in that discussion. Um, uh, last new thing that I'm going to talk about before I hand it over to David uh, is we have a new maintainer, David. Um, so uh, right now we're, we're co-maintainers. I'm going to be doing uh, a lot less of the maintenance stuff going forward. I'm, I'm still going to be around, you still see me, but you're going to be seeing more of David. So I think that. Thank you. Um, and yes, well, things will continue much as they have, but you will be hearing a few more of my opinions slightly more loudly from now on. Um, some of the other neat things that have happened in the last year with KUnit is the Rust for Linux people have added support for running Rust doc tests in KUnit. So Rust's sort of doc tests feature basically lets you put an example in the documentation for a function, have that automatically get compiled, in this case, down to the KUnit test, and then when you run KUnit tests, all of those will be run. Um, it will verify that your documentation actually compiles and runs. Um, we've also done a little bit of uh, poking around with the Rust stuff, including adding 
UML support to Rust for Linux, which is broken again, but there is a PR out to fix it um, due to all of the uh, fun and exciting things you compilers have. Um, there's some interesting discussion that's come out of working with the Rust folks, particularly around how a stack unwinding when you like kill threat K thread happens. Uh, we don't have time to go into that right now, but uh, it's definitely been a very valuable uh, uh, collaboration with them. And uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff around stack unwinding and exactly what you do when you need to kill a K thread um, and how that's a bad thing to do if you can afford it. Um, the other big new thing that we're working on, Kato's had this resource system for ages. Um, so basically you have this idea of a struct KUnit resource, which you can create uh, in a test and it will automatically get cleaned up on test X. It has a free function. Um, they have the in functions as well. Um, they're also reference counted, uh, and there are a bunch of functions for looking up these resources. So you can look them up by providing a match function um, or using a name. We have name the resources, which attach a name Look up, does the current resource test, running test have a resource in this name? I don't want to point it to it. Um, this system has been very useful. We use it a lot in things like the KSN integration as a sort of marker for uh, sending to KSN, hey, there's a test running, please, instead of killing my kernel immediately, you know, return information to, uh, to the test, and the tester can assert, I expect a failure here, I don't expect a failure there. Um, but there are certainly some problems with it. Um, the allocation story has been very inconsistent. There are ways of creating a KUnit resource struct that you allocate yourself, that KUnit allocates for you. Uh, there have been a lot of bugs around showing that gets freed, but that doesn't get freed. Um, we've fixed most of those now, um, but not quite all of them. Uh, they have reference counts, but only about 50% of uses of them actually are monitoring to use the result, uh, reference counts correctly. Um, they're not typed, it's all, you know, that's a void context pointer sort of thing. Um, it's very easy to, you know, look up a resource and get totally, you know, a resource of the wrong type. Um, and this means that it's a very complicated system with a lot of pitfalls, even though most of the uses of it are very simple. Um, the solution we're looking at here is to basically split it up into two, and the headline for this whole part of it is there'll be a new API uh, KUnit defer, which is modeled roughly on the Go programming languages defer feature. Um, this basically will let you pass a single function uh, and a context and say, please run this when my test exits. Um, and then if you want to cancel that earlier, there'll be a function to cancel it trigger it earlier, and that basically gives you most of the stack unwinding problems that uh, Rust has had uh, a way out of that, even if it's not something that, that Rust itself works with. Um, and you know, you can allocate some memory in your test and to know that even if your test gets aborted on that, you will successfully free it. Um, not just memory, open files, hardware resources, etc. We're also going to be, uh, as part of that, improving the existing API to get rid of most of the ways of doing things that broke, uh, had really nasty reference counting uh, semantics. Uh, without that, uh, it should be simple to use the other case, which is you want to look up some data associated with the test. So it basically becomes a uh, test load storage mechanism, uh, which is easy to understand. But for the main thing we want to talk about um, is function redirection. Uh, and this has been a problem basically since the beginning of KUnit. Uh, there have been several attempts to implement mocking or stubbing or something like that because unit testing is really, really good if what you're testing is like a pure function or some other really isolated unit. But as soon as you have you know, calls out into the rest of the kernel, uh, which happens a lot, or you have global state, hardware state, basically there's so much global state everywhere in the kernel, you know, global lists of devices, etc. cetera. Um, it, it starts to fall apart. Uh, the traditional solution is you have mock versions of things. 
Um, this all works reasonably well outside a totally written in C kernel, which has no access to any pleasant language features. Um, and the only way of dealing with that's huge numbers of macros. Um, so every attempt we've done to this has been really tricky. Um, and indeed, we've got a link to a whole web page of uh, attempts of doing this and why they're unpleasant. Um, Ultimately, though, we can simplify a lot of these cases down to you want to call a function, and instead of that function executing, you end up with something else. And there's you know plenty of uh, ways of doing that in the kernel. Uh, none of them enormously uh, suited to, to testing exactly off the bat. So what we've implemented now is a new API. Um, and indeed, we've got a couple of different backend implementations for it that basically let you take a function um, and re redirect any calls to that function from within your test to another similar looking function. Um, and the first implementation of this is really simple. Uh, we call it static stubbing, and you basically just add this macro to the start of your uh, function, which compiles down to if k unit's disabled, nothing, uh, and if k unit is enabled, to basically a check is the test running. Has this test redirected this function? If so, call this function and return instead. Um, you can activate it, change what it's being done with a simple kunit activate static stub function. Um, because it's basically just a function call, it works on every architecture under the sun, has no dependencies. Um, the downside is it's a little bit ugly to put this macro at the front of every function you might want to call, particularly since you're probably going to want to stub out a lot of functions um, uh, when you have a complicated test, some of which might be pretty important system functions. Um, if you have really good eyesight, you can see an example of this being used here. Uh, basically, the the first function uh, to add it one has this this macro at the start, um, uh, saying you know redirect, and you just pass the function name and then all of the arguments. Uh, and then we can replace it in the test by just activate static stub, replace add one with subtract one. Uh, and when we want, we can deactivate it again and, and go back to using the normal uh, implementation. Uh, the way this works is that redirection only happens from within that the K thread that is spawned to run that um, test. So if you need to replace a function that's critically important to the kernel, um, you know, there's some protection around it not causing your entire system to crash immediately. Though, again, this is the reason why you shouldn't run uh, K-unit tests on a production system. Um, uh, the other implementation we have, which ha provides an almost identical API, is based on ftrace. Um, this, you know, has, has slightly different performance characteristics. Um, the API is the same. The big advantage is you don't have to put that very ugly um, uh, initial macro in at the start of your function that basically compiles down to the call. Um, it also, by default, has no performance overhead, though there are ways around that for the static stuff that uh, may, may happen with um, being able to use a, a static call. Um, the downside is it requires ftrace. Um, uh, which is not available on every architecture, and it requires you know more than just basic ftrace. Some of the live patch features. Um, there's another code example. It's basically exactly the same as the previous code example, but missing that one line. Um, you also can't run ftrace-based uh, stubs on inline functions because if it's inlined, you you can't uh, exactly intercept it in one place. Um, so we have this macro k unit stubbable, which just compiles down to no inline if k unit's enabled and nothing if k unit isn't. Um, so our questions for you all are: Is this as useful as we think it is? Um, how terrified are you at the prospect of one of your functions suddenly being pulled out underneath you as a uh, kernel developer within a test? You know, it'd be terribly scary to do this with, uh, you know. KLOC and the like, but you know there are a lot of important functions people want to uh, to mark out. Um, 
is disabling un inlining a more terrifying prospect or is adding these function redirect macros a more terrifying prospect? Um, all of these are free if you don't have KUnit defined, but with people building production kernels with KUnit enabled, um, even if they're not running tests, um, uh, just to have the same kernel image, there might be some performance thing there. And, you know, several other questions, you know, can we uh, optimize this? Uh, is Kent's code tagging feature an interesting way of implementing some of this? Um, for the ftrace based implementation, can we support more architectures? Uh, over to you all. Hi. Uh, are you able to inject errors doing, using the ftrace or some of these stubbing mechanisms? So you can use this uh, this exact API. You could inject an error by replacing the function with a function that just returns the error. Um, it's not you know a single one line inject an error on this thing. But uh, once you've got that function, uh, you can just replace it quite easily. So yes, um, but it's a bit more broad in scope than that. Yeah, one of the things I like about KUnit is it, it's getting harder and harder to test the error path as you get closer to the hardware, right? Yeah. So it just seemed like this is a simpler or an easier way for developers to kind of get engaged or test these paths. That's the hope. <laughs> ben. So I guess from my perspective, given that a lot of the code I work on is architecture independent, uh, F-Trace seems fine, um, and I would never enable it in production code, so I don't have any problems with it. Other people may have different opinions. My big question is, I want it now. When can we get this up screen? <laughs> so there's an RFC out there, and V2 of it went out a uh, couple of days ago when I realized V1 didn't compile anymore. Um, but it's been out there for a little while. The biggest issue with ftrace architecture support at the moment is that it wasn't working on uml oh. which is our default for KUnit, right. and is much faster yeah. uh, but there's no reason you know if, if people are really interested they couldn't port ftrace to uml oh. yeah. really are welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're running out of time for this talk, but it's been great. Yeah, yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs>